In this video, we're going to cover N64 emulation in the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. N64 is one of my favorite consoles of all time. It's one of the systems I have just almost all the games for, and I, I, I just love it. That being said, I have not been the happiest with N64 emulation on Xbox Series X and S as it has stood up to this point. The lack of Vulkan support has made it so we can't use the best plugins available for Moopin64 Plus Next, and the Glide N64 plugin on Xbox just doesn't... I don't like it. Like, that's all there is to it. I don't like it. It didn't... I... Eh. But thanks to some recent updates to the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch, we do have another option available to us with the Angry Lion plugin. Angry Lion is a very accuracy-focused plugin. It runs in software, so we don't need that Vulcan backend like you do for the parallel RDP. So what this does for us on Xbox Series X and S, it gives us access to some really high accuracy N64 emulation, and this in turn fixes a number of games that had a crap ton of problems under Glide 64. Unfortunately, Angry Lion is a very CPU intensive plugin, and there are a number of games that just will not run at full speed with this enabled. Battle for Naboo being one of them. But still, it is a massive step up in terms of emulation accuracy, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now, before we get started, this guide is a continuation of my How to Install RetroArch guide, so if you haven't set up RetroArch yet, refer back to this guide for instructions on how to do so. And if you do have RetroArch set up, but you followed another guide, you might want to check out some of the advanced settings setup stuff that I go over near the end of the video, just to be able to access a few of the things I'm going to cover in this video a little bit easier. The next thing we need are N64 games. If you have a bigger physical collection of N64 games, you can dump these using a hardware dumper like the Retro 2 with its N64 add-on, or if you don't happen to have one of those, I actually made a video on how to dump N64 games with a Game Shark and an older Windows 98 PC. This was actually a really fun project. It isn't the fastest, but hey, it worked. It allowed me to back up over 264 games. Or as always, you can resort to the shady parts of the net to grab some, but no illegal download links are going to be provided on my channel. And for those of you that think calling me names is going to make me somehow change my stance on that... <laughs> Alright, whatever. Anyways, once you have your N64 games sourced, we just need to add them to our Xbox. You could do this either through the internal SSD or through a USB drive of some sort. If you want to add them to your internal SSD, if you follow the advanced setup guide in my RetroArch install guide, you could just open up your development files file share, Windows apps, RetroArch folder, the games folder you made, and drag your games right in. Of course, make sure your Xbox is powered on and in dev mode. And once those are finished copying, you just shut it down. If you would like to go the USB route, just put in a USB drive formatted as NTFS or XFAT. And then you can just drag your N64 games right onto that as well. And there we go. Once those are finished copying over, you can go ahead and close out of your USB drive, pop it out of your computer, and put it into your Xbox. Alright, so over on the Xbox, there's no extra steps required to getting N64 games up and running, so we could just boot straight into RetroArch. And once RetroArch has booted up, we are free to begin loading into N64 content. One of the methods to do so is to go down to load content, navigate to either your external drive or your internal drive, so if you're on external it's going to be E, then you can select N64 games, select one and begin playing. Or if you're on the internal SSD, you go down to S, Program Files, Windows Apps, RetroArch folder, the games folder you created, and then find your N64 games, and you can select one to run. I'm personally not a big fan of this method, it's a little bit slower. So what I like to do instead is make a games playlist. So back on the main menu, you could go down to Import Content, do a manual scan, Choose your content directory, so if you have your N64 games on your external drive, you'd go to that E drive, or if they're on the internal drive, you'd go to that S drive. For my purposes, I'm actually going to keep my games on USB, so this is where I'm going to make my playlist. Now for the system name, press right on your D-pad to get down to Nintendo and find Nintendo 64. Then for the default core, press right on your D-pad again until you get down to Nintendo and find... Nintendo 64, Moopin 64 Plus Next. 
Make sure scan recursively is set to on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And if you happen to have your games in zip format, make sure that you have scan inside archives turned on. And once you have the option set the way you need, go ahead and start the scan. And once it's complete, you'll have a nice new Nintendo 64 playlist entry here on the bottom leftish part of your screen. And then to play a game, all you need to do is go into the playlist and select the one you want to play. And there we go, N64 games up and running on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Now again, by default, Xbox Series X and S are going to be using the Glide 64 plugin, and this will work for an overwhelming majority of games just fine. It lets you upscale and different things like that, but there are some games that just have these weird issues if you stick with Glide 64. And there's various other accuracy issues using it throughout other games as well, but... If you like the look of Glide 64, if you like being able to upscale your games, you're going to want to stick with it. But if you prefer accuracy like myself, or there are games that have issues like Donkey Kong 64 has a camera bug under Glide 64, or other various games that have accuracy issues under Glide 64, open up your RetroArt Quick Menu. And from here, go down to Options. And now go down to the RDP plugin, change this to Angry Lion, and for the RSP plugin, change this to CXD4. Now we'll just tell it to close the content, and this will crash RetroArch for those of you that are wondering. It just doesn't work right. There we go. And once RetroArch has finished rebooting, we can go back into our N64 playlist and boot back into the game we were playing. And when the game reboots, we're going to be in the Angry Lion plugin. So you can confirm this by going down to Options. And there we go Angry Lion and CXD4. And there we go GoldenEye 007 running on an Xbox Series X and S in the most accurate way possible for the system as of this video. Now, the thing about Angry Lion that a lot of you aren't going to like is the fact that it is stuck at native N64 resolutions for its output. The accuracy comes at that trade-off of being able to upscale, but for some games this is really the only way you're going to be able to get to play them completely properly on an Xbox, so definitely worth looking into. Again, if you don't want this, you can just stick with Glide 64, but for me, I'm going to be using this because it fixes a lot of games and it's just accurate to what an N64 is. Like, it's pretty awesome. And for those of you out there that have commented on my previous N64 video talking about camera glitches in DK64, well, the Angry Lion plugin seems to correct that right up for you, so you should be able to play DK64 on the Xbox Series X and S without much issue. And even a demanding game like Rogue Squadron is able to run with the Angry Lion plugin on Xbox Series X and S, just giving you a more accurate representation of the game. Unfortunately, this one is 480i, and one of the downsides of Angry Lion is that it uses interlacing, so you will notice some visual lines through things as you see them. That's just uh, interlacing artifacts, unfortunately. But again, unfortunately, Battle for Naboo is just too demanding of a game for Angry Lion on Xbox. The CPU power just isn't quite there for that one, so we get Rogue Squadron, but Battle for Naboo just mm -mm, not happening. And even Resident Evil 2 works right out of the gate with Angry Lion with no extra setup and settings required. Just set Angry Lion up and begin playing your game. And same thing with the N64 version of Pokemon Snap. It just works right out of the gate. No, uh, no issues to be had here when using Angry Lion and CXD4. And for those of you that like Mystical Ninja, that one should also be running a lot better for you. I haven't made it very far into the game to confirm that it works 100%, but with how bad the beginning right here lagged under Glide 64 and it's just not happening anymore, that should be a good sign. And graphical issues that were present during Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time also cleared up. And for you Paper Mario fans out there, the game should now be more playable. There are a few visual glitches I've noticed under Angry Lion, but I haven't uh, run into any issues with the gameplay yet. 
So for those of you out there looking to get the best N64 experience possible out of an Xbox Series X or S console, I definitely do recommend checking out the Angry Lion plugin, just because it fixes up so many games, makes so many more playable, and just removes a lot of the issues with a number of others. Of course, it's not a perfect solution. There are some games that are just too demanding to run under Angry Lion due to its software nature, like Battle for Naboo, but that game didn't run really under Glide 64 either on Xbox, so it's just such a demanding game for N64. But out of around the 50 games that I've tested, I haven't encountered anything so deal-breaking that I wouldn't use Angry Lion just as the daily driver. But again, everyone's preferences are going to be different. If you like upscaling, Angry Lion's just not going to be for you. There's no upscaling on this, once again. You are getting just that straight N64 output image in all of its native glory. So for those of you looking to get N64 up and running, that's my recommended way of, this is my recommended way of doing so. But now let's go ahead and talk about some of the core options available to us within Moopin64 Plus next while we are using the Angry Lion plugin. So if you open up your quick menu and go into options again, our first option is CPU core. You want to leave this set to Dynarec, otherwise everything will be way too slow to ever play. Pure interpreter is the most accurate thing possible, but CPU is just not powerful enough to do it. RDP plugin, again, this is where we set it to Angry Lion. You can leave this on Glide N64 if you want, if you want to use that upscaling stuff like we've mentioned previously. RSP plugin, this needs to be set to CXD4 for Angry Lion to work. If you're running back on Glide N64, you can set this to HLE. Next, we have the VI overlay, and this is the processing that the N64 system put on the video output. So, filtered is just the straight N64 image as it appears on a real N64. That's what it's going for but you can change it to just have anti-aliasing and blur, anti-aliasing and de-dithering, anti-aliasing only. You could turn off the filtering completely and just sharpen up your image quite a bit. So for those of you that want a more uh, raw image here, you can see how that sharpened it up in Star Fox. It also reveals the dithering like crazy. So unfiltered might not be the way you want to go and you might want to do anti-aliasing and de-dithering instead to give it that more traditional emulated look that you can see right here. So, that's not bad at all. What do you think? Again, these options are going to be totally personal preference, so just go through them and see which ones you prefer. Then we have fun ones like depth coverage and then uh, and depth and coverage. So, they're really interesting to look at. But for me personally, I'm going to leave this on filtered to give me that N64-like output that I just know and love. Next, we have thread sync level, and this is tied into the multi-threaded option. You want to have multi-threading on for Angry Lion, otherwise it is not playable on Xbox Series X or S. But going back up to threaded sync level, this is set to low by default, and for Xbox, I do recommend leaving it here. If you want more accuracy, you can turn it up to high, but the performance increase is pretty substantial and can make a number of games start to lag, so low is just a happy medium for Xbox consoles. Moving on, we got hide overscan, so you can crop out overscan areas in N64 games by turning this option on or off, or turning it on, or if you want to just leave it alone, you can leave it off. Next, we have frame duplication, and this will display the same frame that previously was already drawn on screen if no new information has been added to the frame. So it basically is able to save you a bit of performance. I don't really turn this on on Xbox, I don't really see the need to, but you can experiment with it and see what you uh, see what you think. Next we have frame rate selection, and this is set to original by default. You can also set this to full speed to try to force more FPS out of your games. So, for example, a game like GoldenEye 007 actually ran up to 60 FPS, but would often run below 30, just depending on what was happening on screen. If you enable the full speed option, it will try to hit that 60 FPS more often. But with Angry Lion, this will also mean added performance loads, so mess with this one as you will. It will also break a number of other games, so it's really just a try it out, see if it works for you type of an option. If it doesn't, just change it back to original, or if you prefer accuracy, leave it on original like I will be doing so here. Next, we have VI Refresh, and this is another type of overclock. So you can set this to 1500 or 2200. If you leave it on auto, it is disabled. Again, these will increase the speed of your N64 games, so try them on a game-by-game -game basis, see what you think. 
And if they don't really work or do anything, just leave this on auto. Next, we have analog dead zone percent, so you can set the dead zone for your Xbox controllers. I like to turn mine down to around 5 or 10 for most things, but 15 works pretty well as well. This is really going to be a personal preference option once again, so set it how you need it. And then next up is analog sensitivity. I actually like to increase this a little bit. It helps, uh, helps to decrease that uh, sensitivity found in N64 emulation. Next, you could set what the C buttons are assigned to. You don't really need to mess with that a whole lot because you could just manually move them under the controls option. So if you back out, you can go into controls, port one controls, and you can manually map all of your buttons as you see fit. And once you've remapped them for a game, you can save them as a game remap file as well. Next up, independent C button controls. We don't need to mess with this on Xbox. And then the next option is really cool. You could actually disable the expansion pack. So there were a number of games that had different settings depending on if the n64 console had an expansion pack or not so if you want to play like it didn't have the expansion pack you can enable this option and then when you load up a game it will be running in that lower memory mode pretty fun to experiment with cool to see just the differences between games with and without the expansion pack but of course there are a few games that did require the expansion pack like donkey kong 64 perfect dark majora's mask so make sure you don't have this option on to play those games Next, we have Ignore Emulated TLB Exceptions. You can leave this on Don't Ignore for an overwhelming majority of games. But if you like to do ROM hacks, or there are certain games that can benefit from having these options enabled, you can just go ahead and turn them on. So I like to use the Ignore TLB Exceptions of not using TLB mode. Next up, we have Player Packs. So by default, it's set to a memory pack, but you can also switch it to Rumble Pack. And it looks like Movement 64 Plus Next has also implemented Transfer Pack transfer pack compatibility and while the option will give you the impression that it's going to work after you get it set up it ends up throwing up an air about the transfer pack once you actually try to use it so i don't think this option is currently good for xbox but over on the pc side of things this is working beautifully so hopefully we'll see a couple of updates that will finally get this working on the xbox side of things as well but at least we could change between rumble and memory packs as needed. And then we could do the same things for player two through four. And our last option is count per up. Just leave this at zero, don't mess around with it. If you decide to do overclocking stuff, just use the frame rate or VI refresh option. But that's gonna do it as far as core options are concerned within the Moopin 64 Plus Next Core while using Angry Lion. If there are options you want to set per game, you can come up to Manage Core Options, press A, and save them as a game options file. So for games that use only memory packs, or games that only use rumble packs, nice option to set as a per game thing so you don't have to go in and mess with them. But also if there's a game that needs to use Glide N64 versus Angry Lion, you can manually set that in here as well. But that's going to do it for this one. N64 emulation on the Xbox Series X and S has become far more viable and a lot more enjoyable. There's just much better accuracy, so many more games are able to run without issues now, but of course Angry Lion is very demanding so there will be the occasional hiccup in performance and other demanding games like Battle for Naboo, but for the most part, things are running really well now for N64 on Xbox. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Goes a long way to helping us keep the growth of the place going, and that way we can bring more tutorials like this to each and every one of you. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping us running, and we are super grateful to everyone who has done so. Champions, you are just the most amazing people ever. Thank you so much for being our friggin' rock stars. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.